Hi, this is Todd First. This is another episode of MTC Snackables. Today, we're going to talk about governing Teams guest access, but we're going to do it from the concept of an external person to your company. So let's walk through a brief whiteboard to understand what we're talking about. Um, all companies have always brought in guests, whether they're partners or vendors that they work with, and put them either in their internal AD or a separate Active Directory on-prem. And that's what uh, that's what we're treating them essentially like an employee. So in the, di in the diagram here, you're seeing an employee in an on-prem AD. They have remote access through VPN, VDI, et cetera. And we traditionally treated guests the same way. We would put them rel relatively in the same AD and then give them remote access of some sort. And it really was a lot of uh, additional access that they had. Uh, and from a security perspective, we want to minimize that. But it's what we had to do with the technology that we had at the time. So where we're at now is with, when the cloud appears, and uh, and this is you know Microsoft's M365 cloud, or it could also be uh, leveraging other third-party clouds, these controls don't really work the same way as, as we need them to. So when we bring up Office 365 in this case, we're gonna use the same identity as we have on-prem, which is good. That works for your employees, but for your users that are guests, uh, we don't want to have to give them access to your on-prem environment if they're just accessing content in the cloud. And in this case, we're talking about Teams and collaborating with inside of Teams. So we'll put that up there. Now, if they're your employees, we have all these controls around conditional access to make sure it's the right person on the right device in the right location and even the right risk level. And so if you bring in the guest user on the left-hand side, we now want to bring them into the cloud and collaborate inside of Teams, and what controls do we have there, and how does this work, and how does it differ? So what we do here, we add a guest into your, active direct, your Azure Active Directory, which is in the cloud only, and then I draw yellow lines, specifically calling out that we that guest only has access to resources in, in this case, Office 365. You could also give that guest access to other software as a service apps, which are in the top right, um, so that's the big difference. You're not giving them a, a full-blown user account or even a, a limited user account on-prem. Why? Because you don't need to. Now, if you did need to give them access to the on-prem resources, because that's where other applications are, uh, you know, either you use the same process you have or we have other ways to publish out those applications. But let's stay focused on now that we brought a guest into the environment and they're in your Azure Active Directory, what controls can we have? So the first one that we, we can actually enact are all the conditional access items around uh, identity, where the first one would be MFA. So in that case, we could turn on MFA for the guest user, enroll them in Azure MFA, and they would have to uh, go through that process like a regular user. So let's assume we did that, because we can show that, but let's show some other items as well. Now that we know who they are and they're accessing Teams, we'll go over into uh, an example where here we have a, a gentleman named Isaiah and he's dealing with sensitive data and he's a guest inside this team. We want him to be able to work inside this team, but at the same time we want to be able to block him downloading data because it's very sensitive. So that's one of the, that's the second item after MFA would be actually blocking it. So in this case, instead of bringing the real file, it brings down a, tes a text file uh, that tells us why it was blocked, and then it gives us a message that that was blocked through the security policy. So what can Isaiah do if he can't download these files? How can he be productive? Well, he can just select on uh, any of these documents and start working on them in the web. In this case, I'm in a view only, but I can go up here and edit and edit in the web view. So now the data is staying in the cloud, we don't have to worry about egress once that's started. So that's the second item. The third item we wanted to look at is um, if you actually needed to download the data, and in this case, we'll go to another example. And in, in this case, we're actually going to download the, the data. Here it's an employee health, uh, health account uh, information, so that's, it's quite sensitive. So if I do download the data, what controls do I have there? Now I have uh, Microsoft Information Protection, and what that is doing is encrypting it only for the user who has access to that. And I'll bring it up, I already brought it up earlier. And in this case, you could see, even if I try to enable editing, I, I then can go through this. And if I try to edit anything, I can't. If I try to select data out of here, if I select on these items here, uh, let's select on all of it, I can't copy or paste. 
Now look at the permissions that I have. It's, uh, it's, it expires in July and it's only uh, read only permissions is essentially what I have in this. So if I do need to bring the data down, that's my kind of third option. And the fourth option I just wanted to mention was now that we have these users set up in, for guest access, when who's controlling what access that they have and when they should be removed. And these are called access reviews. And this concept is very simple. It's essentially saying the business user who owns that team should review who should be members and who shouldn't be members. And we're going to do that on a schedule. And that's what this is. This is an access review request that's sent to uh, Megan Bowen, who's the owner of that group. And if she goes through the process and says, well, let me confirm who's a member and who's not a member of this group, we go through and it's going to give her recommendations and also uh, actions of should Charles or Bob still be members of the team that that this is related to uh, their access. So she can either approve them or she could say, no, we're, we're going to uh, decide that they shouldn't have access. We can also set it up so that if she forgets to reply to this, that the, the people could be automatically re removed so the guests will not have access and they could be added back later. So those are four things that we looked at. What we do inside of a MTC session is actually go through the back end on how we set this up and, and protect the identity, protect the data, um, and then also protect who should be in your environment and accessing things at all, which the last piece was access reviews. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you in another MTC Snackable.